We have a caller. All right. <laughs> Hell yeah. Chicken You're on the air bored. with HVAC gurus. Gurus? What kind of gurus? Uh, uh, Steve. In, uh, inadequate ones. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> inadequate. Hey, I got a topic uh, Miss Susie threw out this week or yesterday maybe on washable filters. All right. Yes or no? No. No. Absolutely Depend not. On what? Depend on what type of washables. Right? Okay. What are some different kinds of washable filters? The carrier Mini ones that come in the units? Mini split washables you have to kind of. Uh, yeah. 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 <laughs> Oh, mini split. Yeah, I just tape a bunch of those regular filters to the top of a mini split. Yeah, sure. that's all they're worth doing. But the carrier, the hog hair <laughs> filters are are all right. But um, anything else is a no go. You remember aluminum filters? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, they still every now and then you still see one of them, and it's kind of nutty. I saw one the other day, not a aluminum, but I did a, a call where they had a washable filter. That was mm-hmm. the ones they stock in carrier units that you can yeah. keep. And it was yeah. blown all the way up in against the slant coil, like at an angle. <laughs> I was like, "How long has this stuff been like this? A while, probably." <laughs> if you're gonna put one of those hog hairs in, you gotta get some. I always got hanging wire. Um, that the guys are doing, you know, grid sealants, real sturdy hanging wire, and mm-hmm. cut it and then slide that through the hog hair to keep it keep it stiff. Original. Yeah, that's a great idea. So next time you go, all that insulation is laying down on the ground, and yeah, yeah. way to go, Ralph. Hey. Nice, Setting Ralph. Us up. Setting us up. Hey. That's nice, Ralph. You know, you know a lot about mini splits, but you're still cool, <laughs> even though you do. <laughs> I would agree that you are cool. Yeah. <laughs> well, Steve, thank you for the topic, man. I really appreciate it. All right. Talk to y'all later. We're gonna need you, we're gonna need you to call back in later when we run out of stuff again. Okay. Hey, okay, Steve I had a great else. subject that we need to talk about eventually. Okay, yeah. hold on, Steve. Don't go yet. Ralph has something no. that he said. You have a great subject. Yeah, discharge temperature of a compressor. What yes. is that actually used for uh, when you can get other measurements to get you there before you have to check the discharge temperature of the compressor? What is it used for? Yeah. Where, yeah. Well, Why is it useful? I think it's useful, well, in my opinion, it's useful for superheat, just like it is on the suction side, because discharge superheat is completely correlated with suction superheat. So if you had bad suction superheat or high suction superheat, you're going to have a high temperature superheat on the discharge. Yeah, and then compressor oil starts to um, cook at 250. Well, so, 225 is the dead mark, I think, yeah, for, yeah. oh, no, there's a problem. Yeah. Yeah. That is a good subject, too. Yeah, I posted that, uh, what, yesterday, I guess, after I talked to Ralph, and somebody posted something from, I think it was HR Magazine, yeah, where they had a, yeah. posted a bunch of stuff that would affect it. And it was kind of overwhelming. And if I'm, correct me if I'm wrong, but somebody said if it's low on charge and frozen and flooding back, that that will give you high discharge temperature. High discharge, dude. Well, it shouldn't give you high discharge. It should give you no discharge superheat. Zero in, zero out. So, it, since it's flooded, okay, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to flood a unit and check it. Go ahead, Zach. Ralph, let's use your mini split. They're pretty tolerant of that, aren't they? No, it'll it'll actually give you air. <laughs> it'll give you air. We need some chat feedback on that or a phone call because I think it'll keep the temperature down because the superheat will be down. So mm-hmm. that'd be interesting. I know the compression right. ratio will go up big time. That's what I was thinking. And that's because the suction pressure will be low because you can drive the suction pressure down to like 30 or 40 PSI, but you're still running 200 pounds ahead. So you're five to one on compression ratio where you would be like two and a half or three to one. So you're going to have a high discharge temperature, low discharge temperature. We can remain the same. The suction pressure goes down. The compression ratio will go up with minimal change to the discharge temperature. We'll have to see. That's interesting. We're going to have to slaughter a unit, guys. Do it. That's somebody's we're just, homework. We're just Phil guys. I just made all that stuff up. <laughs> no, I've just been seeing discharge temperature on, uh, I use the Phil piece app, and it's got a little section there, and I'll measure quick, and never heard anybody talk about it other than you don't want your oil 
to get hot, you know, above 225 so you don't cook it. And that's the only mm -hmm. thing I've ever heard about measuring discharge temperature. So I didn't know if it was a a fully functional number to do troubleshooting or if it's just some to, uh, number to protect your oil. It's just another number to help you out. I think you use it for a couple of things. Yeah. I mean, troubleshooting, like uh, reversing valves, too. You can use discharge temperature yeah. Oh, yeah. to measure yeah. the bleed through in a valve. Uh, so stuff like that. So it's definitely useful in two or three different things that we can, we've can we discussed here. Well, what about Corey with his reversing valve? Where's, where's, bring Corey in. Let him talk about his reversing valve. There's, there's yeah. multiple Poser. Corey's. Which one are we talking about? Yeah, there's multiple Poser. Corey's. There's the one Poser. that told Sormo. me to suck it a while ago. All right, we're going to have to call in Corey DeSormo then. So, all right, we'll let you go. Then we'll see if Corey will call in. He'll he'll let us know what's what. He'll call in. He's at the cabin doing nothing. Yeah, he got to punch in a couple extra numbers. He'll be fine. Yeah, bye. <laughs> Take care. Later.